Alrighty. Welcome everybody. Welcome back. This is the seventh and final seventh and final week of the sundials and cobblestones. And I want to welcome everybody back. Um, the last email I sent out, I sent out with the final reveal on it, the final layout of the quilt. So you had the option to go ahead and lay out your quilt this week, you know, finish up your blocks and lay it out this week, or you could wait and do it with us. Hello, Miss Jerry, welcome. We're happy to have you join us today. So glad. Did I hear somebody had a birthday? Did somebody have a birthday? All right, I'll wait and see if somebody will fess up. All right, so behind me, as you see, well, let's try this side. There we go. Okay. Behind me, as you see, we have the sundial and cobblestone um, pattern up. It is in the direction that you would normally place it on a bed. Um, if you put it on your sofa, you would probably turn it um, horizontal versus the vertical. Um, but this is either way you turn it, the layout is basically the same. Um, it is a, a combination of two blocks that create this, this feeling of sundials. And then of course you have the little, what looks like pebbles only in squares, which give it that cobblestone look because cobblestones can also be square, right? Actually, they all kinds of shapes. Wow. Actually, I think a cobblestone is more of a stone shape but hey we won't get into that right now okay definitions it's an artist thing okay you kind of see it the way you want to see it only miss claudine says we only had 35 people for jerry's birthday yesterday only oh my gosh i think if i had 35 people at my birthday party i'd probably fall over um in disbelief because i don't know if i i don't know if i know 35 people very closely that is um and yes happy birthday miss jerry I am so happy that um, you had what sounds like a good birthday party. Congratulations. Um, we won't ask you how old you are because that's just not fair. I don't like when people ask me that. So anyways, we are so happy that you had a wonderful birthday and um, we're happy that you're here with us today. Okay, moving right along. Um, let me think, where was I? Okay. So two blocks to create this quilt. And then, so today we're just gonna talk about the, uh, the borders a little bit and uh, just, just to be a little bit clearer, we won't stay on long. We're already five minutes, in, fin <laughs> five minutes into it. And let's see if we can get you guys out of here quickly. And make, maybe we can make this the shortest video of the sundials and cobblestones. Uh, maybe not because I still have a couple to put together. So here is, here, you know, I'm gonna go to table view so everybody can see this block and it the, this particular camera is so nice okay i say that and where did it go there it is okay i do like this camera i kind of wish i had one more uh oh i don't want to touch the cords i've been having trouble today with the with the cameras they just they keep wanting to freeze up so anyway so here's this one and then i don't think i i don't think i actually have one that's finished and then here is the other one. So if you see, we have the C fabric up here in the top left and the B and the A fabric over here in the um, top right. Um, it doesn't matter which way you combine it as long as you do it the same way every time. If you always have C in the left, then keep C in the left. If you decide to turn it and do A in the left, then do all of the A's in the left. Try not to get them off or else your pattern, you're gonna look at it and it's gonna be a little bit hinky on you. So you don't want that. Um, let's see. Okay. Let's take just a minute. We're gonna finish up a couple of these blocks. And I wondered why I had so many of these left over. Now I know. Okay. Let's finish up a couple of these blocks. We're gonna chain, chain them together. We're gonna come over here to the throat plate. I think I have, I just need four. I just need four of these sections. So we're gonna grab four, one, two, three, four, four of these. And then we need four of these. 
So let's go ahead and grab those real quick. We probably don't even that need that many, but we're going to do it anyways. Okay, here, I'm sorry. I do need to come back to the tabletop. Okay, so here's the thing. This is, if this is the top part, I guess I better turn the whole thing. So if this is the top part, and this is the last block we worked on. So if this is the top part, then we want to make sure that no matter what, no matter how we put it together, we want to make sure, again, this one is in the top and this one is in there so that when we turn it and stitch it down, they are exactly opposite of each other. Okay? Does that make sense? Okay. Now we're going to come back over to the table. Okay. Okay, okay. You know, so often I try to talk to my children about lost languages and how languages that get lost. And you know, I don't, I'm not a genius on this. I'm not a mathematician. I'm not someone who's like this great historian or whatever. But I've noticed that a lot of times languages get lost because they just, they change over time. And what was once um, polite speak um, we wind up giving uh, terms that were once, you know, just polite language. We give them either ugly connotations or we, we change it into something that it absolutely is not. Like, even now, if you say rainbow, you don't think about a beautiful rainbow. You don't, do you? You think about Pride Month. Um, and it, it's not that that's a bad connotation. It's just that they took something that was very natural and and a God-given beauty in it, and it got changed. And it's just again another word that got changed. So what is what is history going to say about you know these things that they keep getting changed? They're words that seem to get morphed into something else, and it I think it just makes me sad. I think it just makes me sad that, that we lose so much because each generation has to have their own language or not has to, they just do. They just make up their own language and, it, and it, I don't want to say there's nothing wrong with it. It's just, it just makes me sad. Why does it make you sad? Well, because sometimes when you and I, my, my daughter's here, so she's asked me why am I sad? Because sometimes when we talk, we can't talk because we don't have the same language anymore. And it's not even that it's that far off. You know, my generation, things were cool. Things were, it was ditto. It was, well, it was. Did you say that in your generation you guys also made words and that yes, generation thing? That's exactly what I'm saying. That is exactly what I'm saying. Each generation changes a language so that what came before, you know, four or five generations back is no longer the same. Like, if you say rainbow, what do you think of? Pride. No. Yeah. And, and, there's, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. I'm not, but you're, well, that's but not we're just changing. I think, about. I think people still think of rainbows, but that's not the only thing they think about or could signify, just as many other things. Come on over here. You don't have to be on camera, honey. You're not on camera. <clears throat> Yeah, we're going to get a lesson from my daughter. But look at old English. I know, right? Look at old English. English. Hang on a second. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drop this down a, a minute here. It would, we wouldn't even be American language if we didn't change things the way that... I'm serious. None of the cameras are up right now. Just the, just the throat plate. Oh. I do need some iron. So... So Nicole's here with me, and we're we're just talking. We, her and I, go back and forth about this a lot, <laughs> and um, and we don't we don't always agree, and I'm 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 surprised we don't always agree on at least a part of this. And uh, you're surprised? Yeah, no, not really. <laughs> I, I shouldn't be surprised, but I I I guess I want to be surprised. <clears throat> it's just you know when I when I think about um, what we've lost when it comes to language. 
Um, even, you know what reminded me of this? Hmm. Is when they were talking about the Second Amendment and um, carrying firearms, there's wording in there that is worded to say that the um, the militia was to be well armed, but they used a word. And then when now when they look at this word, they say, oh, well, this word means this. It didn't mean this. And it's like, wait, no, no, it did mean that. So over time, that word changed and morphed and it no longer it was completely you know, lost if it wasn't for the history books of that time, that word, that meaning would have been completely lost. And that's what makes me sad. It makes me sad that we lose those things. What I don't else? think it's a thing to be sad about, though. I think that things evolve just like like technology and style and the day and age. Everything evolves. I mean, I guess you could be sad if you want to, but it's just evolution as it is in anything else. And sometimes things change for the better, and I just think it's interesting interesting what's interesting what's interesting the the change of the I mean, language or listen the... the some of the words gen z says are so annoying <laughs> <laughs> but we did the same thing in our generation it's the exact same thing as groovy and cool beans or whatever else you guys said in your generation yeah cool beans was one How which i even guys? said as my in in my childhood and but there's also things that we made up too so i don't know well, you know, when um, when my daughter, the, the youngest daughter, Taylor, was going through high school, all of a sudden she's coming home and she's talking, oh, that's legit, that's lit, that's my fam. I'm yeah. like, what? What? Wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, you know, these are all words that were brand new to me. I had, I had mm-hmm. never used legit mm-hmm. that way. And I'm like, wait a minute, what? Mm-hmm. I'm like, sweetie, you got to back up because you don't, you don't lost your mama. She's, she's like, you know, two miles back there somewhere. Where did you go? <laughs> I think these people might be lost on your quilting. What are you doing? Um, just finishing up a couple blocks. Hey, don't, don't judge. <laughs> I'm not judging. <laughs> I think you just get off topic a lot. I do. Your poor audience. They're like, oh, quilting. Just kidding. We're talking about words. <laughs> Y'all, I so wish you guys could be a fly on the wall sometimes when Nicole and I get into some of these <laughs> discussions because she is just, she's hilarious to me. And it's it's hilarious, mm-hmm. you know, the things that her and I, we start banter. to talk about. Yeah, we, we banter back and forth and she starts, you know, getting upset with me and I get upset mm-hmm. with her. But then we, then we start laughing at each other and it's just. We're like know. roommates at this point. Yeah, yeah. Okay, you yeah. can call it that. That's how I consider it, cause she's she just thinks of me as her little daughter, and she's like, oh blah 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 blah, like daughter stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm over here like, lady, just rinse your cups, okay? That's all I want. <laughs> That's like, when did the daughter become the mother, and the mother become the daughter? I I want to know when this happened, because I'm sorry, there's there's something wrong with this, and uh, so yeah, we we do have fun, and we definitely have our difference of opinion. And that's um, and it, it definitely shows up sometimes in in our conversations. And we do, we try really hard to stay away from political stuff. We we do our best to oh, not talk about. Oh, I hate talk talking about, about political, political stuff. Political stuff. We She's definitely like, don't Mom. agree. Mom. Mom. I don't say it like that. Well, of course, because that's my inflection. <laughs> well, Yours okay. is just mom. So I just sound nagging. Well, yeah, because now you're the mom. <laughs> <laughs> I am a mom. And now I'm the daughter. So, yeah. Uh, it's um it is fun and it is interesting so i'm gonna go finish my coffee now all right she's going to finish her coffee now oh did we lose the sound no yeah apparently no it says the sound is still running anybody else If you guys lost the sound on that, I'm going to be so sad because I don't get Nicole on here very often. She will, she does not like to come on. And um, that's why I didn't turn the camera on her because um, she was not prepared to be greeted by, by today. Nope, I heard everything. <laughs> it's Laura. Oh, my gosh. Um, 
I will say that you got just you just got blessed because <laughs> I can't get her on here. I keep trying to talk her into doing these little videos with me um, with the uh, um, cooking because you know sometimes when we get together in the kitchen and, and I'm cooking, she's like, "Mom, you can't do that." You know, Mom, that that's not the way that works. I'm like, "Honey, you don't understand. It's not what you think it is. You know, you sh you can take this and you can do this." And she's like. Huh? Well, hey, Miss Margaret. Yeah, you know, and I, I you know, y'all, I just, I can't even tell you how wonderful it is. You know, I know that it's hard for some families when they have their kids at home and uh, they they live with them. And it, it can be stressful. Good Lord, I, let me tell you, I know it can be stressful. Because um, I, you know, we do get stressed out once in a while, but... It's so great when I can have these conversations with my daughter and, um, and just be able to talk about it. <laughs> Miss June says, uh, sounds like me and my daughter, and yes, she is now the mother. I know, right? My daughter was chewing me out the other day because I didn't rinse my dishes. I was like, really? I was like, really? You know, I'm, I'm come on now. Something's wrong with this picture, like seriously wrong. How many years did I hound them about, you know, rinsing out their dishes or, you know, at least putting them in the dishwasher or what, something like that. Now, now I got her telling me, I'm like, wait a minute, I cook, you guys clean. I make the mess, you guys get to clean it up. <laughs> God bless them. They're sweet. They're sweet. But you know, when they're... When they're having these discourses with you and they're, and they're talking and they're um, giving their opinion, I have to tell you, it warms my heart. I'm, I'm so uh, grateful that they, um, well, one, that they're still talking to me. I mean, so many children either did not have a good home life or they, they don't have this feeling of freedom to speak to their parents. And, and that's a shame. I mean, and I don't necessarily think it's a, a, a parental fault necessarily as, you know, there were things I would never talk to my mother about. Never, never, never. You don't have to worry about that with me. No, she'll talk to me about anything. She's over here. She's still talking. I need to get a second mic for you. I really do. Anyways. Don't panic. Okay, I won't panic. Uh, trust me, my watch will tell me before they ever make it to the door. Well, I say that, but the stupid thing takes so long. Anyways, um, so wait till you have, yeah. Well, I do have grandchildren, and uh, yeah, they're uh, they're not quite there yet as to telling me which way to go and what to do. So I'm hoping that uh, doesn't quite get there. Okay, so we're gonna go back over here to the sewing top table, and finish up these four real quick and Miss Jerry you have your grandchildren telling you what to do now too I know um, shoot I hardly see May she's so into her own little thing she got her own thing to do So, to get back on topic, we are, um, since we're finishing up today, and I still need a couple weeks to finish up the next, um, the next quilt, we're just going to do some, like, UFO kind of stuff. I hope you will stick with me and stay on and show up on Sundays, if you're available. I know we all have things going on, and, um, but I'm going to show you what we're going to do next, and then I'm going to show you how we're going to do it on the next um, Sunday Live. But I'm gonna go ahead and show you the block. Here, hang on, let me go ahead and get it out. I'll put it right here for you. So as soon as I'm done sewing this and I switch to the cameras, you'll see it. And then we're just gonna talk about it. I'm gonna give you the uh, measurements on how to cut it, if you'd like to cut it and follow along. And when I send you the next email for it, which will have the, the um, measurements and stuff on how to cut it out. Um, and there's not much cutting. There's really not. And all it uses is some background fabric and 
left over, just pull out your scraps of um, jelly rolls or your two and a half inch strips or whatever you have. I know um, jelly roll is, is uh, a mode of thing, but you might have strips from other uh, fabric companies, other fabric providers. Uh, so just if you've got, and I have a whole bag of nothing but two and a half inch, leftover two and a half inch strips. Um, so that's why I kind of started um, messing around with this and putting it together because I wanted, one, I wanted to use up some jelly roll strips and I was also trying to work on a pattern for one of my grandchildren, one of my granddaughters on my husband's side. All right, let's go ahead and here's the reveal. All right, so this is the block, and the reason I have left it in this little mesh bag is because I want you to see how cute it is. Um, I believe Miss Sheila made this for me. I was going to say Miss Sheila, and then all of a sudden I'm like, wait a minute, was it Miss Sheila? Miss Sheila, that was you, right? You made this for me because you made a bunch of them. And I think it's absolutely adorable, and I wanted you guys to see this really cute little bag, and she's made about four or five of them. Um, and she made one for me. Anyways, so these are my leftovers. And it is, this is it. It's a scrappy heart. And we're going to get together tomorrow, or I'm sorry, next Sunday. And we're going to, I'm going to show you what I did. And it uses not only a heart template, actually a half heart template, which I can't find anywhere. I looked online. Um, so far I've looked everywhere, even where I got my first one and I can't find it. So I will draw out a heart template for you and uh, get that to you and uh, the, the measurements that you'll need to cut. So what I have done, and the other thing you're going to need is if you don't have like a stabilizer or something, I would get dryer sheets. I'm also using up some of my old dryer sheets. And so I've got my cuts here, here, and I will send out to you what kind of cuts you'll need. And you can kind of just use this as a... Um, uh, something to do in the off times while we're while we're waiting for the next one to come out because it's really not you know a really huge thing it's just using up some scraps and um, it doesn't even use the whole strip but it's a it's a good bit of the strip so as you can see I've got a bunch of strips in here that I've put in there plus I've got my background fabric that I'm hanging on to um, and that one is I think that was the first one I did but all the rest of them I'm using that that white background that whitish background. Ooh, excuse me. I do. I love the heart too. This was the very first one I did, and I thought, hey, I kind of like that. And uh, then I thought, maybe I'll just because it well, it really was just a sample for um, for a bigger quilt I plan on doing later that does not include a whole bunch of hearts, but just a few. And I was like, hey, I think I can do something with that. So that's kind of what happens when I play around. So that's that is next Sunday. So get with me next Sunday. Like I said, I'll send you the email stuff about it. All right, let's get this out of the way. I'll send you the paper template. You're going to have to cut it out, put it on a, you know, I like those little um, template material from Joann's. Um, I usually just, you know, cut that out and then just draw it right onto the fabric. Um, but if you want to wait, we can talk about it next Sunday. All right. All right, y'all, here we go. I would iron that down, but I think I'm going to wait. So here's what we got. We got those four and these four. And most of you probably already have these done. These are the sundials. These are the cobblestones. Okay. All righty. Cutting, cutting mats from Dollar Tree. Yes, yes, actually, you're so right, Miss Sheila. I have used cutting mats myself um, for a template that I was trying to do, and it actually works great. And uh, the best part is, is um, uh, you love this fabric, Miss Laura? Or was there a different fabric? Anyways, um, let me know which fabric you like. Um, the, my points are all off because um, these, some of these, oh, <laughs> That one's upside down, y'all. That's so funny. Okay, we're going to take that one out of there. Y'all didn't see that, right? 
I, I can trim that out. I'll trim that out of my video. <laughs> All right, let me bring you up to the wall here. Hang on. Um, again, trying to get used to my, trying to get used to this um, swap. So I swapped, wait, wait, there, okay. So I swapped this monitor for this monitor and now I'm trying to get used to where the mouse is. Anyways, it's just interesting. Okay, so let's do this real quick here. All right, so we're gonna take this one. Let's see, where am I? And that's over here. And like I said, just if you put them, wherever, whichever way you put them, just make sure you keep them in that order. And I need a couple of pins. Yeah, I need a couple of pins. There's one there. Ooh. And stretch, stretch. Okay, and one there. All right, grab a couple more pins. All right, so everybody see that? So there's, there's one block. First one's upside down. Yep. I do. I do have another one upside down. Oh my gosh, I do. Holy cow, what did I do? Oh my gosh. Okay, we'll get rid of that one too. Okay, these are right, I promise. And then that's what I get for trying to be in a hurry. I don't know how I did that. I really don't. I got distracted, that's what it was. I absolutely got distracted. All right, I'm gonna cut that out of the video too. Y'all ain't gonna see that one on the YouTube one. Okay, and then and then you're gonna put the next one. And you're just gonna keep going and building your, you're gonna keep building across and stitching all the way across, just like this. Put your rows together across here and then keep going with those. Not that one, let's do this one. Okay. Okay can't believe I did that. That is so funny. I should have really looked. But you know, it's that thing where you think you, you think you got it. You, you think it's that's that's right. That everything is right. All right. So yeah, this was the original fabric that I gave to my pattern tester and she did the she used this colors and then I pulled these colors and there's even another set of colors. Let me show you. And all of these will be on my Etsy shop. Um, once I complete them, which hopefully will be in the next week. Um, and then there's another set of colors right there. So there are three different colors in pattern, in, of the same pattern. So this is the first one. This is the second one. Got to make sure I put it in the right place. And then this is the third one. And they'll all be up on my Etsy. I'll have them all up there. Um, for a, you can purchase them for a small fee if you would like to have them. And, um, you know, ladies, I know you guys are going to have your own. Um, <laughs> she's miss laugh. This June is laughing at me. It's okay. You can laugh at me because I laugh at me too. Um, uh, you guys are going to have your own. I know you're not going to want to purchase these, but someone on, um, on the YouTube channel might be interested. So please feel free. I've got my, um, my Etsy, my Etsy um, shop is in there. We're gonna turn that off, turn that off. There we go. Not, now it's not so distracting in the background. Um, uh, so they will be available later. Even with the, uh, the log cabin, hopefully I'll have those up soon too um, from the first one. Okay, so these are, so this is, this is the pattern that you're gonna be laying it out on. And of course, it's in the pattern, it shows which way to lay them out. Um, and again, don't worry about it. If you have A up, in the just make sure A is in all the top left corners, all the way down. No, nope, don't follow those first two blocks I did. Okay, <clears throat> now here's the other thing. When you're doing your borders, you want to measure the borders from the top of where it ends all the way down to the bottom. And check both sides too, and make sure that you're getting a good measurement from all three sections, the middle, the right and the left side. And that's what you want to go by when you're, when you're making the border. So you measure that border piece out to that length and then attach it on both sides, okay? 
if you just take a strip of fabric, let me see if I have a piece of fabric here. But oh gosh, I don't have much of anything. Okay, here, we'll just, this got a little bit of stuff on it. But anyways, if you just take a strip of fabric, stick it to the side, stitch it down, and then cut it off at the bottom, or when you're done stitching, the problem is, is you're not gonna know if your machine accidentally, or you accidentally push fed, or if your machine push pulled extra fabric in. You won't know it because it, what it has done is it will ease in extra fabric. And it will either make this piece short or it'll make this piece too long. Most of the time it makes this piece too long because that top foot drags the fabric, especially if you don't have a walking foot or the DF foot on, which I call the DF foot the differential feed foot. And I'm pretty sure that's probably not the name of it. So we'll just call it the DF foot. All right, so if you're not careful, just make sure you measure out how long it should be and attach it on each side based on that. Once you've got the two sides on, then iron it really well, then measure across the top, across the middle, and across the bottom. And again, make sure that you're getting a pretty good average of that fabric. And then you're going to cut it exactly the, the length that it's supposed to be and then you're going to put it top and then bottom. And you're gonna do this for all four of those borders. And that's if you decide to do a border. You know, it's your quilt. If you don't wanna put a border on it, don't put a border on it. But also keep in mind that um, you may get a little bit of stretch on the edges if you don't at least put something on the edge. Um, serge it, stitch it, put a border on it, whatever you need to do to keep it from stretching because sometimes you wind up with a bias edge on the edge of your quilt and that can be difficult too. All right, we are up to that point where we can, well, we're kind of done. Does anybody have any questions? Oh, and just use the color of, of binding that you would like to, as you see on this one. Um, oh, no, you can see it over here better. This one, we used uh, uh, the Fabric C for the binding. Um, you can use a dark one, you can use black, you can use whatever color you want to. If you're going to ask me what color goes best, it's what other color, whatever color you like. You know, it's your quilt. But don't forget, don't forget, you need to put a label. Make sure you put a label on it, okay? And most of my labels say who stitched it, when it was stitched, what it was stitched for, if I gave it a name, if there was a pattern person, you know, someone who wrote a pattern for it, I put that name on there. If I wrote the pattern for it, then I put on there that I wrote the pattern or that I made up the pattern. Um, but just put as much information as you can. It gives, gives the quilt that extra value, that, that I guess the word's provenance, provenance, provenance. So just, you know, take the time to make a label for it. And most labels go, if you've got the back turn towards you, if your back is turns towards you and you're looking at the back of the quilt, it usually goes in the lower left hand corner. So that's what they, that's what they say for if you're doing, having the quilt judged, that's where it usually goes. And then when it, when you have it laying on the bed and the top is up, you can pull up the top corner of the top right corner and there it is. All right. Does anybody have any questions? Questions, questions, any questions? Sorry, my ponytail looks like crap today. Any questions? You guys have been amazing today. I have so enjoyed it. And I'm, y'all, I'm just really glad that Nicole jumped in with me for a few minutes. I, I keep trying to convince her that we need to do like a little cooking show together because I just wish people could be a fly on the wall when my daughter and I get together, my daughter Nicole and I get together and we talk about, uh, Pretty much everything kids raising kids how they were raised you know what their kids what their lifestyle was like um, and uh, you know just things that go back even what's going on in their lives now um, you always have that well I don't want to say you always have that I have I do have that one daughter who doesn't talk to me a lot but if I go in her room and I talk to her she she and I have a conversation just She's one of those very quiet ones that don't talk much. So if you have one like that, you know, sometimes you got to be a bull in a china shop and just push your way in because they'll appreciate it. They will. They may not right now, but they will. 
um, because they'll have that time with you that they didn't take that they should have taken, and they know that. They'll, they'll know that later. Maybe not now, but they'll know it later. Uh, anyways, y'all, thank you so much. If I do decide to do some cooking shows with my daughter, um, and it's probably just like mom stuff, you know, mom cooking show kind of thing, um, I'll let you know. We, we played with it a little bit, and uh, she's, I have to do some more convincing. I have to convince her um, that this is a good thing, because she's like, Mom, they're all, they're going to hear the way I talk to you, and they're going to say I'm terrible. And I'm like, no, no, they won't. No, they won't. So who knows? Um, you know, uh, internet can be very, very harsh, and I know that. I, I know it from watching the uh, incidences with her on um, Facebook and her uh, different news, her different feeds. I had to, she told me when we first started originally, she's like, Mom, whatever you do, just don't read the comments. Just don't read the comments. And I tried really hard not to, but I did, and then I cried. I boo-hoo squalled. <laughs> I laugh now, but I was not laughing back then. Um, all right, you guys, I won't keep you on any longer. Thank you so much. We're going to do prayer time. So, again, if you, um, if that ain't your thing, you know how I feel about it. You're free to turn it off. Um, but here we go. Father, I just thank you for another chance, another beautiful day, another chance for connection with other people of like-mindedness. And, Father, I just ask you to... Be with each of us as we go about our week, Father. Be with my daughters. Be with my son. Be with our family members as they go about each day. We never know what the next day is going to bring. You don't. You tell us there is no time. We don't. We never. We're never going to know the time, the hour, nor the reason. And Father, we just we need to enjoy each day we're given. And I just ask you to be with us as we do it, Father. And give us the joy we need, the joy we want to feel when we talk with each other and with other people, even strangers on the street, Father. I just give you all the honor and all the glory. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Listen, you guys have a fantastic day. Enjoy your week, and I will see you back here next Sunday, and we will start on that, um, not start, but we will do a, um, a heart block, and let's see what everybody comes up with. All right, listen, I love you. Thank you. Have, it, have a wonderful week. Mwah.